hello and good morning to everyone uh, in this lecture we are going to study about the vertical curve right so first of all what is vertical curve and uh, the type of vertical curve we will study so due to the change in grade or in the vertical alignment of the heavy suppose this is the horizontal alignment and if we change the grade uh, uh, in the vertical alignment of the heavy so it will necessary to introduce some of the vertical curve right some of the vertical curve it may be a summit curve or it may be a valley curve right so in the uh, in uh, we need to introduce some vertical curve at the intersection of the different grades so first of all what is the type of the curve as i said that uh, there are two type of curve first one is summit curve or it may also be known as crest curve second one is valley curve it may also be known as sagging curve so the shape of the summit curve would be like this and the shape of the valley curve would be uh, sorry shape of the summit curve would be like this and valley curve would be like this right so this is a horizontal surface suppose and this much will be the crest so, so uh, like this is summit and uh, like summit this is valley so much this amount of downfall right so summit curve is also known as crest curve and uh, valley curve is also known as sag curve okay so first of all we need to uh, learn that how we um, how we draw the, uh, the summit curve or the valley curve first of all we will talk about summit curve suppose if if one said that uh, there is an up gradient so up gradient this is up gradient of plus n1 percentage right this is up gradient and and again it's an up gradient suppose like that this is n2 percentage right then you have to make them join by end by end so this will form a summit how how we can say that as a summit cause convex side will be in upward direction and convex concave is in downward direction and it will be summit curve okay so let's learn about second one if there is an up gradient of plus n1 and there is a flat gradient means n2 is equal to 0 there is a flat gradient and if you join these two then you will get convex upward and concave downward this will also be called as what summit curve moving to the third part if there is an up gradient which is plus n1 and there is a down gradient minus n2 if we join these two then it will also form summit cos convex upward and concave downward right so this is summit okay if there is a down gradient and again a down gradient suppose minus n1 this is minus n2 so if we'll join these two then this is convex and this is concave so this may be also called as what summit curve so in this way we can say that uh, how the summit curve will be formed and how we identify the summit and valley curve. From this figure we can uh, see that there is a deviation angle. Deviation angle is denoted by capital N and we the difference between first gradient and second gradient will be called as deviation angle. So if n1 is minus n1, put it as minus n1. And if n2 is also minus, put it as minus n2. The equation will be n2 minus n1. That's how we calculate the value of n. Right? Okay. So how we calculate the length of the summit curve? Length of the summit curve. So there are some conditions about it. The first condition to calculate the length of the summit curve suppose we are uh, the length we uh, uh, say at ls right 
so the length of the summit curve in case one uh, we calculate the length of the summit curve in case one if we assume the length of the summit curve is greater than SST it's an assumption right it's an assumption only so if L is greater than SST the formula for this is n is square upon 4.4 where n is deviation angle s is the stopping side distance which will be given in question and suppose if n is not given uh, you must be uh, given um, n1 and n2 the value of n1 and n2 must be given in the question sst will also be provided in the question what you should do first you uh, assume case 1 and calculate the value of L right if you calculate the value of L at the end you can compare the value of L and SST if it's greater than SST then it's okay it's fine the assumption was right and we should not need to go further if uh, there is no requirement then okay so it's a case of assuming L is greater than SST now moving to the case 2 Moving to the case 2, the case 2 assumption is if L is less than SST, if L is less than SST, what will be the value? So it's L is equal to 2S minus 4.4 upon, sorry it's, it's only 4.4 upon N. That's how we calculate the value of L, and the length of the summit curve, okay? But in what condition this assumption is will uh, will make if l will not satisfy if this equation will not satisfy if l is greater first we will assume l is greater than sst okay if this condition does not satisfy and l value of l is less than sst then we'll go to this equation right okay so uh, the length of the cur summit curve for overtaking side distance and intermediate side distance how we can calculate uh, the length of the valley curve on the basis of OST so for this the case one is if L is greater than OST the value of L is NS square upon 9.6 and for case two if L is less than OST the value of L is the value of L is 2S minus 9.6 upon N. Okay. So this is the value of L. In case of OST, if OST is greater than, uh, the L is greater than OST and if L is less than OST. So this was all about the summit curve. We need to remember the formulas which are necessary for the calculation of the summit curve l is greater than sst l is less than sst l is greater than ost l is less than ost right so that's how we can uh, calculate the question now moving to the valley curve now moving to the valley curve first we'll see that how the valley is formed Suppose if there is a, a down gradient and again a down gradient. Sorry. Uh, first we will start with the, the image. This is a valley. Concave side is in on upward and convex is in downward direction. Okay. So if there is a down gradient and another a down gradient if you'll join this you will get a valley curve right because concave is an upward and convex is a downward this will indicate that it's a valley curve then find the value of n whatever is the deviation this is minus n1 this is minus n2 so minus n1 minus minus n2 right this will now moving to the case 2 if there is a down gradient and there and then it's a flat gradient if you will join this you will also get valley curve find the deviation angle okay after that suppose if there is a down gradient and then it's a up gradient so this will be minus n1 this will be plus n2 calculate the value of n 
okay suppose if there is an up gradient and another there is an up gradient join these two you will get concave side upward convex downward this will also form valley then calculate the value of capital N which is deviation angle okay fine now moving to the moving to the equation this is comfort equation comfort equation and uh, uh, how we calculate first one is the comfort condition second is the length of valley curve which is based on the headlight side distance cause see suppose this is a valley curve and if vehicle is moving in the valley curve the weight of the vehicle will be at in downward direction and and the centrifugal force centrifugal force which acts outward to the circular curve this is a part of circular curve and uh, this force will act in downward direction which is centrifugal force look both the forces w and uh, centrifugal force acts downward that's how it's uh, in journey it will create discomfort right so <coughs> if we design the valley curve on the comfort condition and the headlight side distance how the headlight side distance suppose in night you travel in valley curve how much distance you can uh, see far so it will depend on the headlight side distance okay so how will be design the valley curve in the condition of comfort condition and headlight side distance so this is the formula for headlight side distance and comfort condition okay in next lecture we will see about the numerical which is based on these two thank you so much for watching this